Using mouse and keyboard on your PlayStation 5 is something we've covered already in previous videos using these products over here. But one of the guys from Resno reached out and said, Anton, you have not tried the best keyboard and mouse adapter and we really, really want you to give it a try. So that's what we're doing today. We've got one right here. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna hook it up. We're gonna give it a try. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So you guys heard correctly. Today we're going to be testing out the Resno keyboard and mouse adapter. Now these adapters are allegedly the number one keyboard mouse adapter overseas in Japan and they are moving to North America in a big way. They've been around for almost 10 years making products like this. Now not this exact one but they've been around doing this thing. They're not a new company but this may be the first time that you've heard of them. So let's explore kind of what they have to offer together and then we'll hook it up and see how good they actually are. So the first product we're gonna be looking at is the Resno S1. Now this is the standard uh, keyboard and mouse adapter that you're probably gonna use for any of your regular consoles, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox Series S and X, as well as Switch. Now they will work on PC as well, but you can already use keyboard and mouse on PC, so I'm not sure if you specifically would use it on PC. It will unlock games that force you to use a controller and not be able to use a keyboard and mouse, and that's the main claim to fame for this device. They do have other features which we'll explore after we get it connected up, but the first thing we gotta do is a quick unboxing. So when we open it up here, we see basically the device itself. This is the S1. Now I don't want to spend a lot of time exploring that yet because I want to see what's in the bottom of the box. So if I go like this, there's a scannable QR code there and it looks like a cable of some sort. It has a braided USB cable. Now this is a USB-A to micro USB. It is roughly, actually it's pretty long. It's about four and a half, five feet long. It is a braided cable. It feels quite sturdy. And the reason it's a micro USB is because that's what plugs into the back of the Resno device. Now this is typical of most keyboard and mouse adapters that are a few years old. Some of the other ones that have been updated do utilize USB-C and perhaps that's something they would look at in the future, but they haven't needed a revision yet as this is still working just fine. And then we've got a color manual, which is in Japanese, Russian, English, and Chinese. All the way around, but that's the Japanese. That's the Chinese. And on the English, it just lays you, it just walks you through the different features of the device itself. Now I can walk you through the device without those instructions. There's a micro USB port in the back that is used for connecting to the actual device. There is a programming slash macro button of some sort there. On the side, there's one USB port and on the front, there's two USB ports. Now the way that this connects is typical or standard to most adapters. So this side USB port here you will connect the controller that is native to the device that you're using. So if you're using a PlayStation 4, you would plug a PlayStation 4 controller into the side there. If you're using an Xbox, you would plug the Xbox controller into the side there. The front two ports are for connecting your keyboard and your mouse. Now, the first thing you're gonna ask is, does it support wireless keyboard and mouse? The answer is yes, but in our setup, we're gonna use wired keyboard and mouse and that's mostly so that you guys can just see what's going on see what's connected to what but it does support keyboard and mouse now you'll notice I have a PlayStation 5 here and you'll also notice that I did not say works with PlayStation 5 and that's because it kind of doesn't it does but it doesn't you can use it with your PlayStation 5 just like this and it will work on all PlayStation 4 games on your PlayStation 5 but it will not work on any PlayStation 5 games on your PlayStation 5. That is unless you have this. Now this is the Resno D1. Now what is the Resno D1? Well, I'm glad you asked. As far as I can tell, it's actually functionally the same 
as the B Savior U5 dongle, but we're gonna explore it together and figure out exactly how it works and exactly what it does. But in short, it will allow you to connect the Resno S1 to your PlayStation 5 and actually supports all PlayStation 5 games, including games such as Rainbow Six, where traditionally keyboard and mouse have been blocked. Inside here, there's not a lot in here is what there is inside here. We've got the device itself, which we'll explore in a second. And we've got USB cord. Now this is a very short USB cord and I will be able to show you why it's so short, but that's it. Oh, there is a card here. Ah, look at that. There is an instruction card that says, here's how you connect this to your PlayStation 5. So we don't need to guess how it connects to your PlayStation 5. We'll be able to check how it connects to your PlayStation 5 with this very simple graphic as a guide. Now, exploring this a little bit closer, it's actually a metal. It's a pretty lightweight metal, but it is metal nonetheless. And it's pretty basic in what it's got. So we've got a USB port here, USB-C port here. We've got another USB-C port in the side, also a USB-A port in the side, and a USB-A port in the front. Now that's gonna become important just for the connection. So the connection is gonna be very simple. This plugs into your PlayStation 5. Now that we've had a look at the product, it's time to jump over to the desk with the PlayStation hooked up and boot up a game and see how it works. Now we're at the PlayStation 5, we've got everything all booted up, and I want to tell you a few things first. The connection settings for the first time is not super straightforward, and it can be a little bit frustrating. So I'm gonna explain the best I can. There are tutorials online already that show you exactly how to do what I'm gonna say. So if you are confused, you can check those out. If you're still confused, post a comment down below. I will try and make a more detailed instruction on the connection and first time setup. But you need to update the firmware on the Resno S1 device. You also need to download the app. Now they do have the app on the Play Store, or they say they do, but I was not successful getting it from there. On their website, they do have a downloadable APK file for Android phones. The Apple phones, they do have the app in the App Store. Now, if you're not comfortable installing APK files on your Android phone, you may have some problems with this. Again, different video because that is very technical to do that. Also, the first time connecting to the PlayStation 5, I kept getting an error on here. Uh, the app thought that I was connecting to an Xbox and it was a mess. The way that I found that works is to connect the S1 device directly to the PlayStation 5, the same as if it was a PlayStation 4. Do the app connection and then what you wanna do, I'm gonna just show you guys, in the app, you wanna to go to settings, then you wanna to go to global settings, and at the bottom where it says boot mode, it will normally be auto. Switch it from auto to D1. Once you've switched it to D1, then connect it according to the connection diagram that came with your Resno D1 device, and it will come to this. Now we have, this is keyboard on PlayStation 5. Now, you guys are wondering, well, how do we know that this isn't just regular keyboard on PlayStation 5? Let's go into Astro's Playroom real quick, and I will show you. If Astro's Playroom works with keyboard and mouse, then every single game will work with keyboard and mouse. Now I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, what about Rainbow Six? Rainbow Six is the same thing. If we can get past the controller block on Astro's Playroom, then the keyboard and mouse will work on everything, okay? So we're gonna say continue, and then we'll show you guys jumping into So here you can see we are mouse and keyboard moving around. Okay, so now we've established that it works, right? Now what I wanna know is, if I go into Call of Duty, do I get any of the aim assist settings? Now the nice thing about this is, depending on the game, when you open it up, 
So it looks like it's got aim assist already turned on of some sort. So let's see. We'll just boot up a um, bot game. I'm not gonna go into online. We'll start the match. Now I have live feedback on here of what exactly I've got. Okay, that's... Oh, ADS is so tight, but that is... Now I'm not a mouse and keyboard player, so how exactly I play is gonna be kind of funny. But I can say that the control feels really good, actually. If I... How do I reload? I'll have to fix the ADS settings because it the aim gets worse. And I don't know how to reload. And apparently there are no bots here, so I'm going to be here a long time waiting for somebody. I don't know why it wouldn't let me put bots in. I don't want that. How do I pull up the menu? But look at that. talk about recoil you can turn it basically right off it's actually the control is really good I gotta say if I was a mouse and keyboard player this would be good it's actually really smooth and it plays nice now there, while I've got no bots in here, is a good time to look at this. So we've got all kinds of options here to turn off things. We can turn the vibration on. I don't want any vibration on here. We've got uh, aim assist settings. We've got radio menu assist. We've got uh, all kinds of, you can adjust your sensitivity. You can adjust the delay. So the delay, if I turn it to zero, I don't know why you would want a delay. Let's see if that changes. There, that seems more one-to-one. -one. This is pretty good. And then for tracking, if I wanted to trace out that, it's not bad. Like, if you watch me, I think any problems with this are more me, not the device. Like, it, it feels like what I move it, the mouse moves, which is excellent. And then you've also got on the menu here, the keyboard mapping. So any of the buttons that are mapped to any other buttons, it's all on here. So as far as once you get into it, it's a really rock solid device. Now you do also have the ability, as you can see back here, do I want to save the changes? No, I don't. If I go back to the home menu. So overall, it seems to work pretty good. Now, a few things to note. Uh, depending on the game that you're playing, it will actually tell you what the settings in the game need to be for optimal support. So I'm reviewing this right now without having actually gone through and adjusted these settings, but this would be important for perfect gameplay. Now what I've seen so far is actually really solid. I'm happy with it. The feedback is really good. It's about as responsive as I as norm would normally expect it to be. And my PlayStation 5 is not complaining at all. You might almost think that I'm playing on PC right now, but I'm definitely not because you can see when I press escape, I can pull up the PlayStation menu here and that's just not something that you're gonna really emulate. But it goes through everything, including your um, stick your stick sensitivity, your ADS multipliers, everything so for the best experience you need to go into the game you need to set up the settings exactly how this says now this is actually really really good this is a big deal some of the other devices that i have tested in the past did not include this information so you were left trying to guess and figure it out and play with it whereas the Resno guys have actually gone through and made this as simple as possible looking at other parts of the app clearly you can add 
certain games and it'll tell you exactly how those games work but it'll also save your settings for those games so if you have different macros that are saved to different functions you can do that you can save macros to other keyboard buttons whereas other adapters don't map to every keyboard button now the buttons won't necessarily be passed through to the game which is fine you just want to control the device itself to do what you want it to do on the fly quickly especially in a game when you're like in the heat of the moment you got to make stuff happen that's when you want to have access to all those buttons now game support there's tons of games on here it also looks like it supports uh wheels which uh, we can try in the future i do have a couple gaming wheels that i'd love to try with this and see how well it actually works and it even supports uh, different controllers. So if you wanted to use, say for example, an Xbox controller on here, it will let you use an Xbox controller on here and then it lets you remap the buttons if you need to move them around to match more closely the controller setup that you are used to. So it is a pretty robust device. The real downside for me is strictly just the amount of cables. There's so many cables here just to make this all work. Now that's not unique to this. Pretty much any keyboard and mouse adapter is gonna have a ton of cables. The big advantage this has is also Bluetooth support. So if we were using our Xbox controller, I can leave all of this mess in the cabinet with the PlayStation 5 and just have the Xbox controller in my hand and play the game and you don't have to deal with all those cables. Overall, really interesting device. Uh, if you are interested in it, I will put links in the description down below where you can get it uh, directly from Amazon from the official North American retail store. And that's gonna be on there for you guys to use. And now it's time to jump back over and just get the closing remarks on what we're thinking about this Resno S1 and D1 device. Now that you've seen how good the Resno actually is in real gameplay, let me know what you guys think. Is it something that you would consider? Uh, there are other products on the market that have pretty strong support here in North America, and Resno is looking to break into this market in a big way. So I'm curious to know your thoughts. What do you think of this device compared to some of the other offerings out there? Is there anything that you wanna know about this that wasn't answered in this video? I have a few questions myself. Most notably, how does it work if I don't wanna use it for keyboard and mouse? If I wanted to use it to play a different controller than what was designed for the system. Could I use it with my Xbox controller, for example, or a Switch controller? Could I use it with macros and scripts that allow me to play the game better still with controller without using keyboard and mouse? Those are all things that we will explore in future videos, but if there's something else that you guys wanna know, definitely post in the comments and we will see what we can do to explore that together. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.